Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Paul Heidhouse. I am the Program Manager for the Military Pathways Program. Military Pathways is a program of the nonprofit organization Screening for Mental Health and is funded by the Department of Defense with support from the National Center for Telehealth and Technology, or T2. Today's webinar is titled, Hosting a Successful Awareness Event, a Guide to PTSD Screening Day 2013, and it's focused on using Military Pathways PTSD Screening Day kits to host an event. Our Communications Manager, Christy Machese, I will also talk about how you can promote PTSD awareness in your community, whether you use a PTSD screening day kit or not. In addition, we will, dis we will discuss several web, several web and mobile-based assessment and treatment tools. We are excited to have Dr. Julia Hoffman from the National Center for PTSD joining us today uh, to discuss the PTSD, mobile the PTSD Coach mobile application developed by the National Center for PTSD and T2. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few housekeeping items. If you have accessed the web-based portion of this call, you will be able to view the PowerPoint presentation as our speakers are presenting. If you are unable to access the PowerPoint through the Infinite system, you can download the presentation now at www.militarypathways.org. If you would like to ask a question during the presentation, please use the chat feature on the right-hand side of the screen. You may submit your questions at any point during the presentation. We will respond to as many questions as we can at the end of the presentation. If we don't get to your, if we don't get to your question today, we will follow up with a response via email. We will also post a list of the questions and answers on our website. This webinar will also be broken down into several pieces and posted as podcasts. You may notice a raised hand icon on the right side of your screen. We will not be using this function. If you have any technical difficulties during the call, please use the chat feature to notify us. Finally, if you have not yet ordered a kit and are interested, you can access our registration page at www.militarymentalhealth.org on the Order Materials tab. I'm going to start out today by providing some background to the Military Pathways Program and PTSD Screening Day 2013. In the past, Military Pathways has provided support for National Depression Screening Day. Due to, contract, due to contract timing over the past two years, Military Pathways has been unable to support NDSD as we have in the past. Also, in 2010, the U.S. Senate passed a resolution designating June 27th as National Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder Awareness Day. The resolution was sponsored by Senator Kent Conrad, a Democrat from North Dakota, in honor of North Dakota Army National Guard Staff Sergeant Joe Beal, who took his own life following two tours in Iraq. Beal's birthday was June 27th. For the past several years, the National Center for PTSD has continued to recognize PTSD Awareness Day. PTSD self-assessments make up 30% of the total military pathway screenings taken over the past two contract years. And PTSD also accounts for 25% of the resource searches on our website. And finally, last June, Military Pathways created and, and distributed promotional kits of, of promoting the mindbodystrength.org screening site and the PTSD self-assessments. With the popularity of the kits and the huge demand, this year Military Pathways created full educational and screening kits. Now, there are a number of reasons why it is important to raise awareness about mental health issues and why events like PTSD Screening Day are important. For starters, a, rep a repeated a deployment, exposure to combat, and the stresses and strains of military life on families all lead to increased occurrences of mental health-related issues within the military and veteran communities. And like with any illness, early intervention uh, can prevent further progression. Now, one of the greatest barriers to identification and treatment remains the stigma that is still associated with a mental health, di with a mental health diagnosis and treatment. Talking openly and in public helps break through that stigma and lend to the normalization of treatment. Awareness events provide a great forum to encourage the use of military pathways, anonymous, and confidential online self-assessment, a great first step for individuals trying to decide if they need to seek help. And for individuals who recognize that they need to seek help, but don't know the process for getting help or seeking treatment, an event provides an opportunity to make referrals and point them in the right direction. 
And for someone who's never been to the mental or behavioral health clinic, just walking through those front doors can be an intimidating experience. Holding an awareness event in a location regularly frequented by service members, veterans, and their families creates a non-threatening environment. So now that you have some of the whys, let's talk about making your event successful. The key factor to success is ample preparation. The full kits are scheduled to ship out uh, this week. Therefore, you should hopefully receive your kit material several days before your scheduled event, if not sooner. For starters, familiarize yourself and your staff with the kit materials and the provided educational resources. I recommend that you take an online self-assessment at mindbodystrengths.org prior to the event. The PTSD screen is only four questions. It will only take a couple of minutes. At your event, you'll most likely get questions about the self-assessment in the site. So the more familiar that you are, the more helpful you will be to your audience. Also, the staff at the National Center for PTSD are leading experts on PTSD and treatment. Military Pathways has been working with them to ensure that our events and materials provide the most current and helpful resources, and to ensure that things are done in a clinically appropriate manner. I recommend visiting their website and learning more about what they have to offer. And finally, we will be talking about and promoting a number of mobile and web-based treatment tools with the kit. Test out these tools prior to your event. Familiarize yourself with how to access and download them, and make sure you are able to answer basic questions on how they, were, on how they are used. Of course, to make your event a success, you, have to, you also have to start thinking about planning and logistics. We are using the entire month of June for PTSD awareness. As mentioned earlier, the U.S. Senate declared June 27th National PTSD Awareness Day. And for a variety of reasons, Military Pathways has declared June 20th PTSD Screening Day. However, you are in no way obligated to limit your event to either of those days. You know your community best, and any number of factors to be taken into consideration when scheduling your event. For starters, conduct your event at your convenience. However, we always suggest that installations host their events earlier rather than later, as military schedules often force drastic changes as specific situations dictate. Consider hosting your event in conjunction with an existing health fair or other well-attended activity such as a fun run or a pre- and post-deployment event. For some events, the majority of the individuals that you will see will be the result of regular foot traffic. So choose a location, date, and time when there will be plenty of foot traffic. For example, if you will be tabling at the commissary or the PX, choose, date and time, choose dates and times when service members will be shopping or stopping in for lunch. Finally, if you are planning an, out, an, an event outdoors, a create, a, a create a contingency plan. Short of extraordinary powers, most of us cannot control for weather. And now I will turn this over to Christine. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Christine McCabe, Communications Manager here at Military Pathways. And I'll talk to you about how you can get as many people as possible to your event. Once you've determined your date and location, it's time to start promoting your event. And the first step is be getting in touch with your public affairs office. Contact them as early as possible. The more time they have to prepare, the better they can they can come to your event. Um, make your pitch local. We can provide you with national statistics and facts about PTSD, but you should make your pitch about what's happening at your installation. Also, let the leaders in the community know about the event. For example, Kathleen can mention the event in the service. Commander can mention it to a lower command. And in addition to your location, visibility is key to a successful event. Use the promotional resources that you get in your kit and available on our downloadable resource page. Think about the different ways people at your post or area find out about events and activities and try to advertise in that location. We have a post marquee when people first walk in. Um, or other people usually look on the website or the Facebook page. Wherever people get their information is where you should be getting the word out. We recently worked with a um, page that advertised the screening event for each movie at the movie theater. 
And here at Military Pathways, we can provide you with whatever assistance you need promoting your event. If you want a customized press release, a customized flyer, if you want one of us to contact the public affairs office, we're happy to do that for you. We did this a lot for um, people who were running National Alcohol Screening Day events, and it worked out really well. Uh, be on the lookout for emails that will be coming in the next few weeks that will give you promotional tips, including sample emails from multiple people, sample social media posts, and more. Uh, back to you, Paul. Thanks, Christine. Finally, as mentioned earlier, familiarize yourself with the kit content. If you're missing items or need more of something, we can possibly provide them for you. But the more time that you give us, the better chance the, the better chance there is that we can help. We do have extra t-shirts and tote bags for anyone having a larger event. Now, when you registered with us, you requested one of two different kits, the PTSD Screening Day Kit and the Mind Body Strength Promotional Kit. In the PTSD Screening Day Kit, you'll find a variety of educational and promotional items, including an introductory cover letter, a tips for use guide with information on hosting a successful event, screening for mental health PTSD diagnostic uh, clinician cards, and the safety card, a tool which assesses suicidality and provides intervention and treatment tips, proud, tough, strong, determined promotional magnets, wallet cards, and posters, rack, uh, rack cards promoting the T2 and National Center for PTSD's PTSD Mo uh, Coach mobile app, as well as a rack card promoting T2's uh, Mood Tracker mobile app. And these, ca these cards come complete with a scannable QR code for app download. There's an event banner, a variety of educational brochures, most of which are provided by the National Center for PTSD and are also available for download on their site. A number of informational flyers, including Military Pathways Suicide Risk Questionnaire, the proud, tough, strong, determined promotional t-shirts and get a handle on its tote bags. And finally, the very popular DVD, A Different Kind of Courage, and its accompanying workbook. The Mind Body Strength promotional kits include much of what's in the uh, whole PTSD uh, kits except for the educational resources. So you'll receive the introductory cover letter, the event banner, the proud, tough, strong, determined promotional magnets, wallet cards, and t-shirts, as well as the Get a handle on it, tote bags, the promotional posters, the PTSD coach and mood tracker rack cards, and a customizable press release, which is also available on our downloadable resource page. Now, all the, after all the work that you've put into planning your event, we have some tips for running a successful event. Back to Christine. Thanks, Paul. In the immediate days leading up to your event, it's a good idea to send out reminder emails to the people that you've already contacted, your installation contacts, um, your public affairs office. Just touch base with them on the details of your event, location, time, theme. Feel free to let them know about any giveaway items that are available that might entice them to more people to come to your event. Um, see if your public affairs office in addition to promoting the event, can actually come to the event and maybe cover it in the base newspaper or base website. Uh, arrive at your site early enough to ensure that everything that you need is in place. And since most people are holding these events in June and you're doing a lot of talking, be sure to stock up on water to bring with you. Back to you, Paul. Also, make sure that everyone sees you when they walk by and set up your posters and your banner in a space with maximum visibility. Anticipate that people may linger in your area to ask questions or browse the resources. So if possible, use several tables to allow enough, to allow enough room for multiple individuals to visit your table. Also, your support staff are incredibly helpful, but only if they know the when, where, and what. So be sure to communicate with them. And you should assume that not everyone is going to just stop by your table to browse the pamphlet. So if you can, include an interactive activity to draw passers-by to your area. A strength competition of some sort is a great way to stress the message that strength is both mental and physical, and that asking for help is a sign of strength. Back to you, Christine. Thanks, Paul. 
I just want to, one of the things I want to do is reiterate what Paul said about using the banner provided in the kit. The banners are designed to be eye-catching and sturdy, so please use them. Hang them up on your table. Hang them up behind your table. Um, and encourage everyone to pick a giveaway item. Not everybody is going to want to stop and pick up brochure, but most people will be happy to stop by and grab a ticket. One of the things that we've done at National Alcohol Screening Day event is that because the giveaway is a water bottle, we put some educational material and some promotional material in the water bottle, uh, such as wallet cards, the uh, app, the uh, mobile application app cards, and um, I'm sorry, rec cards, and a promotional magnet. But maybe with a t-shirt, you might want to put together a little package. Maybe roll up a t-shirt, put a rubber band around it, and put some extra material there so when people stop by and grab their t-shirt, they'll get some educational material too. Encourage the people who come by your event to tell a friend. Best marketing is word of mouth, and they might not do it if you don't remind them to. Back to you, Paul. Be prepared to make referrals. Military Pathways can provide you with a generic a referral template, but once again, you know your community best. So create a referral sheet, make them available to everyone who stops by the table. On that sheet, you should include a list of both military and community-based mental health providers and resources, their phone numbers, addresses, fee schedules, accepted insurance plans, as well as their, service in, their services and hours. Also, if possible, administrative staff should contact these providers in advance uh, to be certain that they are available for follow-up evaluations and interventions. If you need Military Pathways assistance in putting together a referral page, a referral page, please let us know as soon as possible. Christine? Thanks, Bob. Uh, in addition to working with your public affairs office, there are lots of ways you can promote your events, the online screening tools, and the mobile-based resources. You can also assume that not everybody is going to come to your event, but the, their lack of attendance does not mean they don't need to hear your message. So don't forget, uh, when you're planning your event, don't forget to reach out to the people who likely won't show up, too. You can do this with emails that include a link to the online screening. You can do this by posting about PTSD and the screenings on your social media sites. Um, Leave some of the promotional materials, such as the magnets and the wallet cards, somewhere where people can take them. These have the screening site uh, on them. Some sites we've worked for, some sites we've worked with, find that putting material in some high traffic place, like the lobby of the field, at a table that's not necessarily manned, um, will be will be an effective way of people getting the promotional material because we can pick up material without anybody seeing and get the material. Next slide. There are several ways you can use uh, social media to promote PTSD awareness. We have a list of Facebook and Twitter posts on our downloadable tip site, and we'll also be sending some of those out via email. Um, of course, we encourage you to be creative and write your own posts, too. Uh, so use your social media not only to talk about your events, but also to talk about the availability of the training, um, links to some links to our learning and resources page, links to any place that you think would be effective. Next slide, Paul. Here, uh, here are the social media posts. Over here on the on the right of the slide, you'll see a CPSC infographic. That's a great thing to link to because it gets a lot of information conveyed in short little graphic ways, uh, easy to digest. And uh, when you're using Twitter, don't forget to use the hashtag CPSC. You can go to militarypathways.org anytime to check out our social media posts. Next slide. And again, encourage screening via email. The educational message landing in someone's inbox is a great way for them to just be one click away from getting a screening and getting a snapshot of their mental health. They get the results in the privacy of their own home, and you can provide these referrals to people in a 
private, non-threatening way. Um, we'll be sending sample emails along to all the registrants. Back to you, Paul. All right, thanks, Christine. So over the past several years, the Military Pathways has been providing uh, programming kits for National Alcohol Screening Day and National Depression Screening Day. Um, we've reached out to you for both feedback and uh, what worked and didn't work on putting together your event. So we put some of this information together to create some best practices, reminders, and lessons that have been shared with us over the past several years. Uh, first off, something that sites have found to work well is to encourage staff to show up in civilian clothing. Sites have found that the service members service members are more likely to engage in a conversation with someone not in uniform and not showing a rank. Also, giveaways. People love candy. They may stop with a candy on the table, and then it is up to you to keep their attention. You might consider getting your unit chaplain or other spiritual leaders involved. Service members and their families often have a different comfort level and trust with the chaplain. Even if they're not attending the event, make sure that, that they are aware so they can be available or to provide counsel later. And finally, pre-event publicity. You can never get enough of this. Make your event family friendly. Choose hours that accommodate all shift schedules. These are issues that affect the entire family unit, so make it a family-friendly event and engage the spouses. Show the DVD that we mentioned earlier, A Different Kind of Courage, running throughout the event. This is a great resource created by Military Pathways a number of years ago. It addresses stigma head-on and goes a long way towards normalizing symptoms and behavior. Also, have everyone walk away with a referral sheet and or a wallet card. They may not necessarily want to engage with you at the event, but the resources are all created to be used in the privacy and comfort of the home. Notify your security staff well, or well in advance uh, to ensure that they are available in case of emergency. There's no need to cause an alarm, but this can be a sensitive and intense topic, and, you, and you'll want to be prepared in case an issue does come up. Also, notify your nearest hospital or crisis center in advance about your event. They may see walk-ins or may start getting questions. Make sure that they're prepared to answer them and understand why, why there may be a sudden interest. Also, liability should be addressed in the welcome letter given to each participant upon arrival. Make sure that they know that the screenings are not diagnostic and cannot be used as such. They are intended to help begin the process. It's very important that participants understand this. It's also important to convey uh, to your service members, veterans, and their families that the PTSD program is a public education program, and that once again, the online screenings are informational and not diagnostic. Also stress that the screenings are conducted anonymously. Individuals may be asked why they're being asked for demographic information or if their IT address is being tracked. Military Pathways has no, has no way of knowing who actually takes the screenings. We collect demographic information to help us better understand, better understand our user base and to better shape our outreach and resources. We are not able to tie screening results to a specific set of demographic data. Finally, diagnosis, treatment recommendations, and second opinions are not provided on the screening site. And finally, Multiple events equal greater reach. If you can set up in several different locations or hold events on different days throughout the month, you will reach a larger number of people. Military Pathways will work with you uh, to the best of our ability to ensure you have the resources needed. Also, ensure behavioral health involvement. If you are not a behavioral health provider, make sure that they are involved. This is a behavioral health topic and should be treated as such. And finally, Military Pathways can help during all stages of planning and conducting an event. So call us. So we're now going to move on to the web and mobile tools section of this presentation. Before we get to Dr. Hoffman, I'm going to talk about the mindbodystrength.org online screening module. For those of you who have used militarymentalhealth.org, drinkingiq.org, or testyourmood.org, 
mindbodystrength.org is the same tool with a look and feel design with the PTSD Screening Day 2013 branding. As you can see, the main page has four tabs at the top. In addition to the screening tab, you will find our learning and resources page, a link to our resource registration page, and of course the Military Pathways blog. For our purposes today, we are, or we're going to focus on the screening page. In the right-hand column, you'll see a progress indicator and a brief description of the PTSD Coach app. You can, you can click on the graphic and be directed uh, to the PTSD Coach download. You can also find a link to a website featuring all of T2's mobile apps, which you will hear about in a few moments, some of which you will hear about in a few moments. Finally, you have the choice to switch languages to Spanish. English is the default language, so only use the button if you wish to switch to Spanish. To begin a screening, read the information in the center, in the center box of the page and click on the Take an Anonymous Mental Health Screening button. Our screenings provide six, six different validated screenings, and each varies in length. As mentioned earlier, the PTSD screen is only four questions. Prior to those four questions, users are asked to complete a set of demographic questions. Once again, while we collect ge a generic demographic information, all of our screenings are anonymous. We only collect demographic information to verify DOD or VA connection to help shape our, re our outreach and resource development. When you click the Take an Anonymous Mental Health Screening button, you will land on the Select the Screening page. Here you have two options. You can choose a screening based on specific feelings, and each of those options will link you to a specific screening. Or you can just choose a specific screening. In order to move on to the screening, you have to answer each of the demographic, or you have to answer each question on the demographic page. If a specific question does not apply to you, or you aren't comfortable with answering, choose not applicable or other. Once again, Military Pathways does not collect or track any specific information. Once you click continue, you will be on the screening page. You are directed to answer each question, and each question needs to be answered directly for the screening to work properly. If you do not answer a question, it will not allow you to complete the screening. When the users click the Submit button, they will be directed to a new page where they will receive their results, some, ge some general instructions, and a variety of resources they can use, such as more information about the screen for a disorder, access to a variety of tools developed by the National Center for Telehealth and Technology, some tips for symptom management and self-care, some referral information for branch-specific behavioral health services, and this is one of the ways, and this is done based on how you answer the demographic questions and one of the reasons why we ask certain demographic questions. And finally, there is information for accessing Military OneSource. If you have scored positive for the alcohol, depression, PTSD, or general anxiety disorder screens, Military Pathways Interactive Video Doctor Program will open in a separate window. More information on the Video Doctor Program is available on our website. Now, before I turn the presentation over to our guests, I want to remind you that any questions should be submitted using the chat feature on the right-hand side of your screen. Questions will be answered at the end of the presentation and will be posted on the mindbodystrength.org website. So now I would like to introduce Dr. Julia Hoffman. Dr. Hoffman is a clinical psychologist and mobile health lead for the National Center for PTSD. She is also a faculty affiliate with the National Center for Telehealth and Technology. Dr. Hoffman is one of the creators of the PTSD Coach Mobile Tool. Dr. Hoffman? Hi, thank you so much, um, and thank you for having me here. Um, I want to jump right in and talk about the, the problem and the need that we saw for building mobile applications in the first place. I think mobile applications are, are cool. They, they appeal to uh, our veterans, our younger veterans especially. And it certainly seems like this is a major trend in healthcare and in the world broadly. But the coolness of these things is really not why we approached them and started building them for uh, mental and behavioral health issues uh, for veterans and service members. Um, 
What we have found specifically uh, with PTSD, but, but even more broadly than that, is that veterans experience some amount of stigma for seeking care. Whether that's real or imagined doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, if there are any reasons why uh, veterans may feel like they, they should not engage in needed care, we want to build something in place of, in place of nothing. Um, educational tools, things that can demystify treatment, et cetera. There are also plenty of reasons why, why veterans and service members who are willing to engage in care may not be able to show up. Um, all kinds of logistics can get in the way. The reality is that weekly 50-minute uh, sessions may not be that convenient to fit into most, uh, most people's schedules, especially if they also have jobs, families, et cetera. And there are a variety of other issues as well that, uh, that are around the specifics of the individual veteran or service member. So uh, maybe uh, people are sub-syndromal, meaning that they, they don't have full-blown PTSD, but they've got some symptoms. Maybe they're not ready to engage in the evidence-based psychotherapies that we've got available for them. Etc. And then on the clinical side, clinicians are also sort of strapped for time and resources, um, especially in places like primary care or other places where mental health services full full protocols or um, evidence-based psychotherapies are not generally carried out. Um, what we find is we need um, sort of smaller uh, interventions that we can provide in the moment to veterans in order to serve as sort of clinician. Um, Extender tools, so that while a primary care provider may not be able to explain all of the intricacies of PTSD to a patient while they're sitting in the uh, in their 15-minute appointment, they may be able to give this um, our app as a sort of take-home work to go home and review, to use self-assessment tools, and to start engaging with positive coping mechanisms. I'm going to go to the next slide. We see mobile applications not as a complete solution but as a partial solution to some of the problems that we have in getting the right treatment to the right people at the right time. So the recent emergence and pervasive of mobile devices uh, has led to innovations in clinical care that address some of the challenges that I brought up on the last slide. So now that we know that, that a huge segment of the population, even those with, with significantly lower resources, are carrying around these very powerful computers in their pockets, um, we can improve treatment delivery so we can get the we can get treatment to the right people. Um, we can make treatment more efficient. We can make it more accessible, and we can increase treatment effectiveness so we can help people engage uh, wholly in the treatments that they require. On the next slide, you can see Im an image of the four major domains that make mobile technology particularly applicable to uh, relieving some of the problems that we have in getting uh, PTSD screening, PTSD care, PTSD self-care to uh, patients. So first of all, um, these tools are anonymous and safe. So if a veteran or service member is avoiding care because of concerns about stigma, having an app uh, like PTSD Coach, which we're going to talk about, on their phone allows them to get some education and some, some information and some opportunity to try things differently without ever needing to show up in a clinic appointment without ever needing to acknowledge any problems that they don't want to acknowledge to anybody else. Now, ideally, I should say this uh, probably multiple times, we do not see these tools as replacing uh, standard face-to-face -face care. And as a clinical psychologist myself with a, a history of uh, actual clinical care, um, I don't believe that these tools can ever replace the clinical care, at least not, you know, at least not with the technology that we have now. I guess I need to leave it a little bit open for 20 years from now. Um, but we need a lot of things that we get from that face-to-face -face interaction. That said, if we can't get people to come in for that, then at least uh, we can provide these tools that are anonymous and, um, and can potentially serve as a step into care uh, for those who may be on the fence. Um, the second characteristic is that they're accessible and immediate. So mobile applications are always in the person's pocket or purse. At all times, uh, they're always usable, even outside of clinic hours, outside of any kind of uh, time or space constraints. And that's an incredible, incredibly valuable um, opportunity. Mobile technology can be made to be targeted and patient-centered. So in PTSD Coach, we leverage the person's own uh, photos from their phone, their music from their phone, their contacts. This is all only if they choose to engage um, and to provide, uh, provide access to those things. Um, 
but we can create, we can use the rich experience of being on a highly personalized device in order to ensure that the patient is getting what they specifically want and need. And then finally, lest we forget, the mobile technologies tend to be connected. So uh, mobile phones are phones. Uh, we can use them to reach patients. They can use them to reach us. So in worst case scenarios, um, we can actually still engage some of that human component if and when we need to. Um, on the next slide, you can see that uh, my office, specifically in VA broadly, is not just building mobile apps for, uh, for VA patients. Uh, we build apps for veterans and service members broadly, even outside of VA, as sort of an, out, uh, an outreach tool, um, and outside of DOD as well. Um, and concerned significant others, so family members, community members, the veterans and service members, and then healthcare providers in and out of VA. Um, on the next slide, uh, you, what you can see is how we came to the process of, of building PTSD Coach in the first place. Um, so I was uh, doing clinical work at the time. I, I spoke with my patients and found that uh, what they really wanted were some tools like breathing exercises that they could just do on their own between, um, between group sessions. And unfortunately, um, what we found was that the incredible web-based tools that we had spent many years building were not accessible from uh, the patient's primary internet connectivity devices. Um, which were their mobile phones. And at the time, we had been building everything in Flash, um, which is a certain kind of, um, which is a certain kind of um, code. And so that was no longer accessible. Um, so I had this idea that we would go and try to get a small pot of money, some um, unspent salary money from the previous year, and uh, just to build a demonstration app. So we spoke to experts. You see the guys with the talk bubbles and the think bubbles. We spoke to experts in PTSD. We spoke to expert clinicians, frontline clinicians from the field in DOD and VA. And then we talked to 80 uh, veterans with PTSD to find out, really, what is it that you would want in an app with PT for PTSD? And we were sort of surprised. Uh, and by and large, we went with what the veterans wanted, except for in a couple of places where we actually could not deliver what they wanted um, for, for clinical or scientific reasons. Um, but I think that the uh, positive reception of the app has been a reflection of the fact that we really included veterans in this process. We worked together. You can see my team there pushing the puzzle pieces into place and ultimately created um, this app that we saw as sort of a demonstration tool. And we start, started trying to figure out what exactly we were going to do with it. Until at some point, someone showed someone else, showed a White House staffer, showed Barack Obama. And then uh, our whole world uh, went crazy. Um, he was excited about the app. He thought it was a nice demonstration of innovation in government. And so he gave us six weeks to get it out to this demonstration app out to market. So that's what we did. We, we jumped a bunch of hurdles that had not been jumped before. It was the first official VA app. Um, and according to some, the first official government, federal government app, although uh, that's contested by IRS. So, you know, uh, take that with a grain of salt. Um, and ultimately, um, we're able to use the president's support as a way to get this app to market, which I don't know what it would ever would have happened before. And it really started um, a boulder growing. So now we have a complete suite of mobile applications um, for veterans, service members, providers, family members, caregivers. Um, and all of these are being rolled out slowly um, over the course of um, these, these past two years and, and the years coming. Um, I'm just going to go a brief tour through PTSD Coach. One of the best things about this app, I think, is that it's very self-evident what it does. It's not rocket science. You look at it, it's sort of what you see is what you get. And this is, as I said, exactly what the veterans asked for. So on the next slide, you can see the splash screen for PTSD Coach, which um, is just the, the branding. It says it's from National Center for PTSD and VA and TOT's National Center for Telehealth and Technology, T2. Um, and then the home screen, which shows these are the four major functions of this app. You can learn about PTSD and its treatment. You can take a self-assessment for PTSD. I'll talk a little bit more about each one of these in a moment. You can manage your symptoms. That's the meat of the app where a person can actually uh, manage acute distress they're having. Um, that was the, the number one thing that veterans asked for was just give me something to do when I'm feeling stressed because of my PTSD, even if it's not specifically about being triggered or reminded of a trauma, but just having a hard time coping with the general stresses of everyday life. Um, and then the fourth button is find support. Um, so we can actually use that, you know, as I, as I mentioned, these, these are uh, connected devices. We can actually connect people with more resources and support. 
On the next slide, you can see um, the, the top level screen from each of those four sections. The first one is learn about PTSD. Um, so all of these are just very brief, uh, uh, readable or listenable information about PTSD pulled from National Center for PTSD's um, uh, fact sheets online and distilled down so that they would optimize for a mobile format. Um, the assess section, so the assessment that is in the PTSD coach is the PCL, the PTSD checklist. We will shortly be updating the PCL-5 to represent the newest version of uh, the DSM that's just come out in the past um, week. Um, and but right now, the PCL is the assessment, the 17 item assessment that's used throughout VA and DOD to track progress for those who are either coming into or engaged in PTSD treatment. Um, people can track their history over time by looking at line graphs, and they can also schedule assessments for the future so that they can monitor their progress um, in a purposeful way on a monthly or weekly or biweekly basis. Um, if you tap on that Manage Symptoms page, uh, Manage Symptoms button on the home page, what you get is this third screen that says, what's wrong? And you'll notice that these are all um, in the veterans' words. It's not directly related to the DSM uh, 4 or 5, um, although it's it obviously, um, for anyone who, who knows PTSD diagnosis, you'll see that it's not that far from what's in there, but it's, it's definitely more colloquial. Um, so what the veteran first does is that indicates what's wrong. And then they indicate on a scale of 0 to 10 how bad it is. So I may say I'm, I'm feeling um, worried or anxious at a 9. If my stress is particularly high, I'll be offered crisis management tools. I'll be offered the opportunity to speak to the veteran's crisis line or to call someone for support. If not, then I'll be offered a tool from a list of tools that are appropriate for that problem. So if I'm feeling worried or anxious, I might be given a relaxation exercise, like a deep breathing exercise or progressive muscle relaxation. I might be given a cognitive um, intervention, a small self-coping statement, et cetera. Um, and I'll show you what those look like in, on the next slide. The final section is find support. You can get support right now. You can set up your own support network from your um, contact list that's on your uh, mobile device, or you can find professional support. On the next slide, you can just see a couple of examples of tools. Um, deep breathing, positive imagery, soothing pictures. That's um, a picture pulled from someone's uh, picture library of the baby. And then this is make a plan to reduce isolation before the screen. You can see that tool has a thumbs up or a thumbs down button. Um, if someone gives the, the tool a thumbs up, then it makes it more likely to come up again in the future. If they give it a thumbs down, it will not come up again in the future. This is important because if you have veterans with disabilities, for example, physical, uh, some sort of physical disability especially, and they can't do certain tools like take a time out by going for a walk, they may not ever really want to see that tool again. And so while we want to offer everyone the complete list of the hundreds of tools that are involved in here, the app quickly becomes customized to the, the person's pre uh, personal preferences. Everything is 508 compliant, which means that it can be used by a person with any kind of disability. Um, and you can see that closed captioning is included on any of the exercises that have an audio component. On the next slide, you can see an example of our, uh, this is, you know, we have sort of different ways of measuring our success with this app. Um, certainly, our the reach has been more significant than we even anticipated. Um, so it has been downloaded over 110,000 times in 74 countries. Uh, um, April of 2011 when it was launched, and that's without any kind of marketing effort whatsoever. Uh, it's also been versioned by five countries. Uh, PTSD Coach Canada and PTSD Coach Australia are available on the markets now. Won a couple of awards, but I would say that the most, um, the, the the proudest moment of this app and the biggest metric of success for me personally is that within a, just a couple of hours of launching the app to the app store and, and literally no one else on my team yet even knew that it had been launched, a veteran in distress called the Veterans Crisis Line and said, um, they asked him what was wrong. He said he didn't know, but that his phone told him to call. So what we found is that the bar is actually very low for helping people. Sometimes what all that people require is an opportunity to say, how bad is it right now? That's pretty bad. Maybe you need some help. And um, if, if, that, if that alone, among all of our you know, fancy and well thought out interventions, if that alone is enough to help people some of the time, I think that that's incredibly valuable. Um, on the next slide, you'll see that we, we have done some evaluations of PTSD coach after the fact. I think 
overall, this feels sort of not surprising to me that the take-home message is that veterans with PTSD have found it overall moderately to extremely helpful. They're very satisfied. They feel like it helps them track their symptoms. It helps them have some sort of self-efficacy for coping, that they feel like there's something that they can do, and they have better ability to understand their experiences. We also got some more information uh, that we weren't expecting, like that veterans were using this app as a way to communicate with their family members um, about their PTSD and to show them in black and white, look, this is a real thing. It exists in this app. Um, but as I say, I don't think it's that surprising because uh, the feature set was initially determined by veterans in the first place. Um, on the next slide, you can see this is our evaluation plan. We certainly go through usability and feasibility um, testing with all of our apps validate our concepts, and then we look at clinical outcomes, and then we look at how to, how to best disseminate the tools. So that's why it takes a little while sometimes to get from, from the beginning of the, of the development phase to the end. Um, for veterans with PTSD, on the next slide, you can see the PTSD coach is for veterans and service members broadly, regardless of their um, status in VA or DOD. It's really an outreach tool, and it, uh, while it can be used as a uh, supplement to existing care, um, we don't, uh, we're not collecting any information back from it, et cetera. So it's, it's really for the broadest group of veterans and service members. For VA patients specifically, there's a, a, a separate version called VA PTSD Coach that passes the data from the um, PCL assessment back to the clinical record. Um, so we're really excited about that, but it's just in, in pilot with a couple uh, sites right now. And then for patients enrolled in evidence-based psychotherapies like PE prolonged exposure for um, PTSD, which is our gold standard treatment, one of our two gold standard treatments for PTSD, um, we have apps that are intended to um, assist in the face-to-face -face therapy so that the face-to-face -face component of therapy actually looks exactly the same, but that um, the, the patient can replace the workbook, for example, replace the recording devices required in PE just to make it um, easier to actually complete the necessary treatment. My last slide is just this, uh, this overview of the various apps that we, we have coming out in the near future, the ones that are near done, uh, done or near done out on the market. Um, and most of these, as I say, pertain to um, the, treat, the management of PTSD and related disorders. Um, but some of them do not. Moving forward, for example, is for um, is problem solving training. Um, that one should be out soon, and it's related to the website moving, startmovingforward.org. Um, parenting to go is for general um, parenting after deployment, um, and I think the, the rest of them are, are somewhat at least related to PTSD. Um, so you can see more about each one of these apps on myvaapps.com. As we release them publicly, we put up some amount of information about them, including press releases and um, Overview, uh, overview information, patient handouts you can, that you can print. Um, so you can check out that website uh, and see if there's any additional information that you can use there. I think that's it for me. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Dr. Hoffman. Uh, we ask if you have any questions, you please submit them via email to military at mentalhealthscreening.org. Uh, you can also contact Dr. Hoffman directly. Uh, at the National Center for PTSD, if you have any specific questions for her, uh, I'd like to say I'd like to say a huge thank you to Dr. Hoffman and our partners at the National Center for PTSD, and I would also like to thank all of you for joining us today. We will be emailing out uh, to you a copy of today's present or a link to a copy of today's pre presentation, as well as a brief survey on today's webinar, and we really look forward to getting your feedback. We do have a limited supply of kits still available, so if you have not yet and would like to order one, please visit militarymentalhealth.org and click on the Order tab. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. For more information on the National Center for PTSD, you can visit their website. Once again, thanks to Dr. Hoffman and my team here at Military Pathways. Thank you for joining us, and have a great day.